She was in her 60s, healthy, otherwise well. And then she started to have nightmares, seeing flames in her dreams. Everyone thought, she's having anxiety, stress, it'll pass. But then she started to see these flames when she wasn't asleep, there in front of her, distorting her vision. A few months later, her memory started to fail. And later yet, she started to fall and lose her balance. When I first met her at the hospital, I asked her, can you see the balloon I'm holding? What color is it? She said, oh yes, it's green. But there was no balloon. There was nothing green. She couldn't see, and she didn't know she couldn't see. I sat her down with her husband, and I told them she was suffering from this fatal brain disease. It was going to get worse. It would rob her of her ability to speak and to move. And I'll always remember how she clutched her husband's arm and said, I'm so scared. And she looked at me with her unseeing eyes filled with fear, and I thought they were telling me, please help me. So prion disease. Many of you have heard of this as mad cow disease. Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease is the name it has in humans. What is this horrible disease that takes someone from a normal state to death in a matter of months? Well, in most cases, 90% of the time, it just seems to happen. We don't know why. In the other 10%, you can actually inherit this disease. And in an even smaller percentage, people can actually acquire this disease. That was the fear with mad cow. That you could actually acquire this disease. So what causes it? Well, it's a protein gone bad. Now, I'm not talking about the protein powder that you put in your milkshakes, and I don't want to make anyone afraid of eating protein. Because what really is protein? We are made of protein. We all have genetic code, DNA. It exists to make protein. Now, imagine this is a protein. So far, it's in its plain state with no folds. But in order for any protein to have function, it has to fold in a very, very specific way. And if you fold it properly, or not, it has a function. Now, prion protein is the protein culprit in this case. So it has a slightly more complicated shape. But if it's the right shape, it has a decent function. The problem is, in prion disease, it goes from its normal shape, and then it misfolds. Suddenly, it doesn't fly so well. Now, OK, a protein loses its function, big deal. The problem here is it doesn't stop with that. Now it sidles up to another protein, and it makes it change shape. And then, suddenly, you have a mass of clumped protein building up in your brain. Not only that, it spreads through the brain, like dominoes moving through your brain, killing brain cells as it goes. Now, it's bad for the brain, but it's kind of a fascinating biology. I first learned about prions when I was in undergrad school, and I thought, wow, a protein that can do that? That's amazing. I want to learn more about that. And it was only years later in medicine that I met patients who were affected by this disease and I saw that human side. So we want to heal. We want to help people. How do I help someone with this kind of disease? Well, as a neurologist, I can help explain what's going on to them. I can tell them the diagnosis, which is actually healing in many ways, because so many times the diagnosis isn't clear. And they're suffering from what is going on. And the unknown can be often worse than the actual diagnosis. But surely, surely there's more than that. Well, that's when I put on my science hat, and I go to my lab, and I think, OK, let's figure this out. Now, science means different things to different people. For me, science is the pursuit of knowledge, and it's fueled by curiosity and creativity. The biggest advances in science happen when people think outside the box. And I'm not against boxes. We all use boxes in daily life. So you have a hammer, it's in your toolbox. 
spatula, it's in your kitchen drawer. But what if you have a hammer that's also a spatula? Okay, maybe that's a bit weird. But you need a new box or a different way of thinking of things. Well, in prion disease, before we knew any of this protein stuff, all we knew is, well, there's this disease, and we knew it was transmissible. It was an infectious disease. Well, we thought, okay, we've got a box of infections. What's in this box? We've got viruses, bacteria, fungus, parasites. We have treatments for that. Let's use those treatments to target this disease. But it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Well, it took somebody to think outside that box and realize, gee, everything in this box has DNA, RNA. It's trying to generate proteins. Maybe it has nothing to do with that. Maybe it's the protein itself. And we now know that to be true. So we have a new box in which we have protein. OK, let's make a treatment that gets rid of this or stops this from forming in the first place. Great. Well, we've done that. We do have compounds and drugs that prevent this from forming. But guess what? They don't work in people. Well, why not? What are we doing wrong? Well, wrong box. It turns out that when this protein misfolds, sure, it can look like this. And I should say this isn't to scale. But it could look like this. Or it could look like this, a totally different shape. Or it might look like this, a totally different shape. And unless we can target all those shapes, this shape-shifting prion is just going to keep going. So now we have to try to approach this with combination therapy, targeting it at different angles to try to prevent the disease. And that's what I'm working on in my lab a lot right now. Now, there's more than just prion disease at stake here. And while I find the whole story fascinating, it's also really difficult. It's frustrating. It's hard. Things don't always work. Sometimes you're stuck in the box. And it's hard to convince funding agencies sometimes, well, why should we care about such a rare disease? One in a million get this disease. Well, that misses the point of science. Now, research and science, think of it like a seed I'm holding in my hand. From that seed can grow a tree. That tree will have many leaves, and those leaves, one might be a drug, one might be a treatment to help symptoms. One might be a new diagnosis test. But from that seed, I can't predict which leaves will come. All I know is you have to put that seed in the ground, water it, and let it grow. And more importantly, what's beneath the surface? Roots. Roots. Those are the basic science. That's where I hang out, digging around in the roots, trying to figure out how a protein can change shape. Now, I want leaves to happen, but there's no way I can say, because I'm working on this particular root, that leaf is going to happen. That's not the way science works. And in prion disease, when you're playing in the roots, interesting things happen. You grow close to another tree with its own roots, and you realize, hey, you know what? Prion disease isn't the only disease that does this. Some of you may have heard of diseases called Alzheimer's disease. Parkinson's disease. They also misfold their proteins and have them spread through the brain. Well, guess what? Maybe they, too, would benefit from a combined approach to therapy. But if you think, I couldn't have predicted that starting from an infectious disease so rare in humans, we would go through to understanding how proteins change shape all the way through then to Alzheimer's disease. You can't predict the future in science. So I guess I want to leave you with this take-home message that we must remember to support science, and science fueled by curiosity and creativity. And if we do that, who knows what we will discover. Thank you.